This dinner is quick, delicious, and you only need to buy five things to make it. Start by heating up your ground beef or ground turkey in a skillet and boil a pot of water. Once your water is boiling, you'll add in some tortellini. Cook according to the package. Shred up some mozzarella cheese. I have this linked on my Amazon storefront, mealsandmunchies.com. You'll then season your meat, salt, pepper, Italian seasoning, and a little bit of crushed red chili flakes. Drain it, add a jar of marinara sauce, and one block of cream cheese. Once that's well combined, add in your cooked tortellini. Top this with your mozzarella cheese and bake for 10 minutes at 350 degrees. And follow me for more recipes. Creamy Tuscan chicken is one of my favorite meals to eat and to make, so let me show you how to make it. I like to start off by butterflying my chicken and then seasoning it with some salt, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, some paprika, some oregano, and a bit of black pepper as well. I'm just measuring with the heart with this one. From here, I'm just gonna heat a pan with some sun-dried tomato oil. This is really what's gonna start building those flavors for us. And then just a drizzle of olive oil as well. Once that comes up to heat, we're gonna go ahead and lay down our chicken and sear on both sides. While our chicken's cooking, let's go ahead and prep our veggies. This recipe has really simple ingredients. We're just gonna split some cherry tomatoes in half and then cut one whole shallot or a half of an onion, whatever you have on hand, and crush a few cloves of garlic as well. We're also going to need an entire bag of spinach for this recipe and don't forget to wash your veggies. Once our chicken has nice color on both sides, we're gonna remove that from the pan and toss in our shallots as well as our garlic. Go ahead and let these cook for about three to five minutes until they get nice and aromatic. For a fun addition, I like to add some mushrooms to this dish. They lend themselves really well to the tomatoes and the wine. Speaking of wine, we're going to deglaze the bottom of our pan with some dry white wine before tossing in our cherry tomatoes. And I like to add some of those chopped sun-dried tomatoes as well. Totally optional, but I like to add in some red pepper flakes at this point, as well as a little bit more oregano before pouring in about a cup and a half of heavy cream. Go ahead and let this simmer and let all the flavors get to know each other before tossing in your spinach. I made a mistake and put my chicken back in at the pan at this point, and as you can see, I took it out. So just toss in your spinach first, let those get to know each other, let the spinach wilt down a little bit, add in some Parmesan cheese, and then we're gonna tuck our chicken back into the sauce. Once you get your chicken nestled back in, we're gonna let this cook for another five to 10 minutes, either on the stove top or in the oven, and let the sauce get nice and thick and creamy. We're gonna squeeze some lemon over top to brighten up the dish, and then serve with some mashed potatoes or polenta or rice, but you cannot skip the crusty bread to soak up all of that sauce. I hope you enjoy. Sesame chicken with fried rice. Let me show you how easy this is to make. Oh, yum. Add butter, frozen vegetables, eggs, rice, and soy sauce for your fried rice. To the chicken, you'll add one egg, garlic powder, paprika, salt, pepper, and some corn flour. Fry it in some oil until it looks something like this. Let's make the sauce. Garlic, soy sauce, brown sugar, sesame oil, corn flour. The chicken goes back in. This is so good. If you think chicken and rice is boring and bland, you have to try making this Nando's copycat peri-peri chicken and rice. Also, did I mention it's a one-pan recipe, so cleanup is super easy. Start up by marinating the chicken thighs in some olive oil, chili powder, garlic powder, black pepper, smoked paprika, cumin, and salt. Sear it in a pan on both sides, and then you're going to baste it with some medium peri-peri sauce if you don't like it too spicy. To the same pan, add some butter, and then saute some garlic, red bell pepper, and tomato paste. 
Toast the rice and then you're going to add your chicken broth along with a bunch more spices. Cover to let it cook to perfection and then we're going to add our peas and cilantro and mix that all together. Finally, add the chicken back on top and all that's left to do now is enjoy. I don't really want to do a lot of cooking tonight, but I want to eat something really, really good. And I don't want to order takeout. So I'm going to show you one of my go-to dinners. I always get a lot of hate whenever I say I'm making a simple recipe and people are like, that's still too much effort. I cook for a living, so for me, this is very minimal work. I'm gonna do about one and a half cups of jasmine rice. Wash this about three to four times until the water runs clear. Rice is washed into the pot. Fill it with some water. The Brussels sprout from my previous video is actually a cabbage. Steamed cabbage is probably one of the top 10 of my favorite things. Get a bowl. Add a little bit of flavor. Now we add in the cabbage, and now we cook. Now the main part. These are so good. I get these from Aldi. Comes with sauce. We don't want them. No, I'm just kidding. The sauce is actually really good, but I like to make my own. Once your rice is about halfway done, go ahead and add these to your cooking creature. Cooking creature is also known as an air fryer. <gasps> I almost got so sad because I thought I was out of my Korean barbecue sauce. It is my favorite. If you want to screenshot it, add in. Mushroom flavored soy sauce. Fish sauce. Grated ginger. I like to add a lot of it. Red pepper flakes. Garlic. We know her, we love her. We're gonna grate in as much garlic as her soul tells us. I'm gonna add a little bit of honey. Beautiful. And now we clean up our mess because less most lustrous. Look at how beautiful and fluffy that rice is. The nuggets are still hot. We're gonna put them right into our sauce. And now we mix it. Our chicken. Oh my goodness. That is beautiful. I would top with green onions, but I don't have any. Toasted sesame seeds. Follow along for more recipes. Hey y'all, so my mom used to make these crunchy tacos back in the day and they are so bomb and they're super easy and cheap to make. She actually passed away a couple years ago so I can't ask her like exactly how she did it but from what I remember, she always had potatoes in there. I boiled three but I only used two of these and just boiled them whole until they are soft and um, you can peel off the skin and then I used a whole chicken and just shredded it up. You can use leftover chicken, leftover whatever type of meat. That's what my mom always did. Um, and then I added a can of tomatoes just for flavor and texture and just a whole bunch of seasoning. Just throw some seasonings in there, mix it up, taste it. You can always add more. I also added some garlic salt after I mix this up. And then, yeah, it is going to look like this. Doesn't look that cute, but I promise it's going to taste bomb. And then you want to heat up some tortillas. This is how I do it. Um, and then I threw some cheese in there, threw in the filling, and then added more cheese and this will make like 30 tacos um, I just use a whole bag of tortillas and then you just want to cook it on both sides for a couple minutes until they are nice and crispy like that then just add some hot sauce or salsa and it is so good y'all I promise today for a little dinner idea we're making creamy lemon pasta with lemon crusted chicken we're going to begin by cutting our chicken breast in half and then we're going to wrap it in plastic wrap and pound it down it's going to help tenderize it as well as help the chicken cook evenly now it's time to prepare our coating. I'll have everything displayed on the screen for you guys, but we're basically going to take our thinly sliced chicken and dip it into our flour, our egg mixture, and then into our panko. We're gonna fry our chicken breast in about an inch of oil just to give it color, so on medium heat for about two minutes on each side, and then we're gonna pop it in the oven at 400 for about eight to 10 minutes to finish cooking. Here I am sauteing our onion, garlic, and red pepper flakes for about two minutes on medium heat, and then we're going to add in our lemon zest and lemon juice and let that chill for another two minutes. Now it's time to add in your half and half, but make sure it's warm before you add it in because the acid from the lemon juice can cause your sauce to curdle and we don't want that to happen. Let your sauce simmer for another two to three minutes, and then you're going to add in your Parmesan cheese, your seasonings, and your parsley. Add in your cooked pasta as well as a half a cup of pasta water and continue to let your sauce simmer until you're happy with the thickness of your sauce, and you're done. This is the recipe that got me to love shrimp. The shrimp is battered, fried to crispy golden perfection, and then tossed in a delicious sweet and spicy volcano sauce. To a saucepan, combine buffalo sauce, brown sugar, honey, garlic, and rice vinegar. Once it thickens, we'll add some butter, parsley, and red pepper flakes, and then set that aside. Now we'll make our wet batter, it's just egg, salt, and black pepper, and then for the dry batter, salt and pepper, as well as cornstarch. Dip the shrimp first in the wet batter, then into the dry, and shake it all around until they're all fully coated. Now get some oil nice and hot and fry the shrimps until they're beautifully golden and crispy just like this. Toss in the sauce, serve over a better fry with some green onions, and all that's left to do now is enjoy.
had pasta in my life. You've never had pasta? No, I've never had pasta. You've never had macaroni and cheese? 